हेलो दोस्तों सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी स्टडी नोट सेवन व्हिच इज रिलेटेड टू अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ ऑडिटर्स डिस्कालीफिकेशन ऑफ ऑडिटर रिमूवल ऑफ ऑडिटर सब्सिक्वेंट ऑडिटर फर्स्ट ऑडिटर री अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ ऑडिटर एंड एवरीथिंग सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट्स बिगेन स्टार्टिंग विद अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ ऑडिटर्स दैट इज सेक्शन वन सब सेक्शन सिक्स ऑडिटर कैन बी फर्स्ट ऑडिटर और अ सब्सिक्वेंट ऑडिटर ऑडिटर कैन बी फर्स्ट ऑडिटर और अ सब्सिक्वेंट ऑडिटर कंपनीज कैन आइर बी गवर्नमेंट कंपनी और अ नॉन गवर्नमेंट कंपनी ओके ऑडिटर कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स दैट इज फर्स्ट ऑडिटर एंड सब्सिक्वेंट ऑडिटर एंड कंपनीज कैन आइर बी गवर्नमेंट कंपनी और मे बी अ नॉन गवर्नमेंट कंपनी नाउ लेट स्टार्ट विद अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ फर्स्ट ऑडिटर अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ फर्स्ट ऑडिटर इन केस ऑफ नॉन गवर्नमेंट कंपनी नॉन गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इज अ कंपनी विच इज अदर देन गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इट इज अ डेफिनेशन गिवन इन द लो दैट नॉन गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इज अ कंपनी विच इज अदर देन गवर्नमेंट कंपनी now what are the rules which is to be followed to appoint the first auditor in the case of non government company first of all appointed by the board of directors within 30 days from the date of registration of the company like the uh, 30 days from the date of registration of the company when the company got, uh, gets its registration then after 30 days of that registration the first auditor in a non government company is appointed by the board of directors within 30 days within that 30 days from the date of registration of the company and if board of directors fails to appoint the first auditor in a non government company then it is appointed by the members or shareholders within 90 days at egm within 90 days at egm that means that this 90 days will be counted when this 30 days gets over because here bod fails to appoint in within 30 days then in next 90 days members or shareholders will appoint the first auditor in a non government company at extraordinary general meeting that is egm now appointed order shall hold the office till the conclusion of first egm that means when the uh, first egm conclusion will come uh, he will hold the office the appointed order will held the hold the office till the conclusion of first egm okay now appointment of first auditor in case of government company that is section 139 sub section 7 In in case of non-government company, uh, I forgot to write uh, section here. It may be uh, it is maybe section one thirty nine sub section six. Uh, you can just cross check it from the module, but it's not important to write it in the exam, so I didn't write it accordingly. So now first auditor in the case of government company section one thirty nine sub section seven, auditor shall be appointed by controller and auditor general of India that is CAG. In case of government company, who will decide? CAG, Comptroller and Auditor General of India, within sixty days from the date of registration of the company. In the case of non-government company, Board of Directors within thirty days. And in the case of government company, Comptroller and Auditor General of India within sixty days from the date of registration of the company. And if CAG fails to appoint, if CAG fails to appoint, then the Board of Directors will appoint in next thirty days. And if Board of Directors fails to appoint, then members at EGM will uh, appoint in. 60 days after the tenure of board of directors so this is only an uh, there is only one thing new uh, in case of government company that is first comptroller and auditor general of india will uh, appoint the auditor within 60 days and if they fail to appoint then board of directors next 30 days uh, here it is also 30 days but if board of directors fail to appoint then members at egm will appoint within 60 days after the tenure of bod here it is 60 days and in case of non government company non government company it is 90 days right now appointed auditor shall hold the office till the conclusion of the first agm now coming to subsequent auditor that is section 139 sub section 1 non government company subsequent auditor in case of non government company first in first annual general meeting appoint individual or a firm as an auditor it auditor may be an individual or a firm Who will hold the office from the conclusion of that meeting till the conclusion of its sixth AGM? That means when a uh, individual or a firm is appointed as an auditor in first AGM till six till the conclusion of sixth AGM, he will remain appointed. He he will hold the office till the conclusion of the sixth uh, AGM. Thereafter, till the conclusion of every sixth meeting, the following points need to be considered in this regard. What are these points? place the matter relating to such appointment of ratification by a member at every agm place the matter relating to such appointment of ratification by a member at every agm that the auditor is doing the right work or not and the facts about it 
uh, appointment of ratification that why that auditor is appointed and is he doing the work properly or not it is regarded to that regarded to that before such appointment written consent of the auditor to such appointment appointment se pehle ek written consent lena hota hai auditor ka written consent of the auditor is needed and certificate of appointment in accordance with the conditions as may be prescribed a certificate of appointment is given to the auditor according to the prescribed conditions now auditor satisfies the criteria provided under section 141 uh, if auditor satisfies the criteria of select uh, selection which is given under section 141 then he will be appointed file a notice of such appointment with the registrar within 15 days of the meeting auditor should file a, a notice of such appointment with the registrar within 15 days of the meeting now coming to government company subsequent auditor in case of government company that is section 139 sub section 5 where there is a government there is cag comptroller and auditor general of india mind this thing okay now within a period of 180 days from the commencement of financial year or we can say after the end of tenure of first auditor within a period of 180 days or when the tenure of first auditor ended then after uh, after the period a tenure of first auditor we will count 180 days from that ten, uh, end of tenure okay so comptroller and auditor general of india within a period of 180 days from the commencement of financial year or we can say that after the end of tenure of first auditor <clears throat> now coming to reappointment of auditor so in this reappointment we will study that a retiring auditor may be reappointed at agm if if these conditions are satisfied that is he is not disqualified for reappointment he is not disqualified he has not given the company a notice in writing of his unwillingness to be reappointed that he has not provided the notice that he don't want to get reappointed or he don't want to work more longer with that company and special resolution has not been passed in that meeting appointing some other auditor or providing expressively that he shall not be reappointed and sr has not been passed by the members or shareholders that in that meeting appointing some other auditor that they are appointing some other auditor or providing expressively expressively that he shall not be reappointed or they are stating that that auditor should not be reappointed if that sr has not been passed then the auditor can be reappointed and if at agm no auditor appointed or reappointed then existing auditor shall continue okay so this is reappointment of auditor now let us discuss about rotation of auditors that is section 139 sub section 2 so class of companies for rotation of auditors what are the companies including listed companies excluding opc and small companies including listed companies but excluding opc and small companies now all unlisted public company having paid up share capital greater than equal to 10 crore all private limited company having paid up share capital greater than equal to 50 crore and all company having paid up share capital of below threshold limit mentioned but having public borrowings from financial institution banks or public deposit greater than equal to 50 crore so all unlisted public company having paid up share capital greater than equal to 10 crore public company unlisted public company greater than equal to 10 crore private limited company paid up share capital greater than equal to 50 crore and company having paid up share capital of below threshold limit mentioned but having public borrowings from financial institutions or banks or public deposit greater than equal to 50 crore now an individual as auditor for more than one term of five consecutive years this means the audit, uh, the auditor if if the auditor is an individual then he can be reappointed for more than one term of five con uh, consecutive years okay it means that if an auditor has done uh, work for five years in a company then he will not be appointed for five consecutive years like in continuous like uh, i would take an example ram is working in a company and he worked from 1 may to 1 may 2014 to 1 may 2019 so he will not be reappointed for 2 may 2019 to 2 may 2024 okay but he could be reappointed after this 2000 after uh, this uh, ten, end of tenure okay so an individual as an auditor for more than one term of five consecutive years consecutive years and an audit firm as an auditor for more than two terms of five consecutive if the auditor is an individual then one term of five consecutive years and if the auditor is an audit firm then 
he could con uh, that dead form could continue for more than two terms of five consecutive years that is five plus five that means from here to here right now individuals shall not be eligible for reappointment as an auditor in the same company for five years from the completion of the term he couldn't work in the same company for consecutive five years as i have told you with an example so this is uh, rotation of auditors now coming to remuneration of an auditor it is decided in annual general meeting decided for first auditor uh, remuneration for first auditor is decided by board of directors like fees payable plus expenses incurred and plus facilities provided are also given to the auditor now what is the eligibility of an auditor it is very important from examination point of view and it is section 141 141 describes the eligibility of an auditor and qualification eligibility 141 subsection 1 he must be a chartered accountant must be a chartered accountant and qualification must be practicing in india chartered accountant and must be practicing in india chartered accountant and must be practicing in india and in case of firms 141 subsection 2 majority of partners must be ca and practicing in india majority of partners must be ca and practicing in india ca and practicing in india it is eligibility now removal of auditor section 140 how to remove an auditor before expiry only by special resolution after previous approval of central government before expiry if the term is not over for the auditor then auditor could be removed only by sr after previous approval of cg sr will be passed and approval of cg will be taken as we are removing auditor before completion of work we need to you are uh, uh, removing the auditor before expiry as we are removing the auditor before completion of work we need to prove the fact that it is in the interest of the company as a whole and not the director that the director is not taking personal benefit by removing that auditor but it is for the interest of the company now apply in ADT2 form to central government within 30 days of resolution by board and pass SR within 60 days of approval first ADT2 form will be applied to central government within 30 days of resolution by board when the board has taken resolution that within 30 days ADT2, ADT2 form will be applied to central government and SR will be passed within 60 days of that approval now auditor should be given reasonable opportunity of being heard opportunity of being heard Audit, the uh, company or the director should listen to the auditor that what are the reasons behind that and he will be given an opportunity for being heard so this is removal of auditor coming to resignation of auditor section 140 subsection 2 auditor has to file a statement to company ROC and controller auditor general of India if government company if the auditor wants to resign then he has to file a statement to company ROC registrar of companies and controller auditor of general if there is a government company then CAG ko file karega statement with reasons facts etc within 30 days from the date of resignation he will provide the reasons and facts within 30 days from the date of resignation penalty if the reasons and facts are not fair then the auditor may be penalized from 50,000 to 5 lakh depending upon the materiality of, materiality of the facts this is resignation of auditor okay now special notice for appointing new auditor at an AGM special notice use appointing new auditor at an AGM deciding not to reappoint retiring auditor except where consecutive term of 5 to 10 years completed deciding not to reappoint retiring auditor except where consecutive term of 5 to 10 years completed I have told you recently where it is uh, 5 to 10 years completed when an individual case an informed case it is 10 years we have uh, let me show you that just a minute see we have uh, seen it in the rotation of auditors individual in case of 5 and audit firm in case of 10 5 plus 5 so deciding not to reappoint retiring auditor except where consecutive term of 5 to 10 years completed Appoint, uh, auditor ko reappoint nahi karna hai special notice aap de rahe ho decide aap re retiring auditor ko reappoint nahi kar rahe ho lekin aap wahan pe reappoint kar rahe ho jahan pe individual ka term 5 years ke liye khatam ho gaya aur firm ka 10 years par khatam ho gaya okay special notice for copy to the retiring auditor as uh, copy to the retiring auditor is given 
retiring auditor has the right to make representation against his removal that is opportunity of being heard now duties of the company state that the auditor has made representation send a copy of it to all the members and if not sent it shall be read and a copy will be filed with roc so this is duty of the company now the most 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 important topic is section 141 subsection 3 disqualification of an auditor and i think this video is not too lengthy so i will share second part and we'll discuss about the disqualification of auditor in that video disqualification of auditor then power and duties of an auditor and audit report i have already made videos on audit report one section 143 3 already made a video that is i have shared a trick which you can i will give the link in the description and you can you can directly watch it from there okay and uh, then comes auditor note to render certain services already made a video i will provide the link auditor sign audit report audit committee already made a video functions of everything is covered now the only remaining thing is disqualification of an auditor and cost audit and secretarial audit which i think is the most important interest you could do yourself and if you like my way of teaching then don't forget to hit the like button and नए मेहमानों से रिक्वेस्ट है कि चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर लें और बेल आइकन को दबाना ना भूलें जिससे आपको सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन की नोटिफिकेशन रिसीव होती जाए थैंक यू एंड ऑल द बेस्ट